Hi everyone, it's Aga from EurekaCrystalBeats.com and I'm here with another fun beading tutorial for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to check out the rest of our channel and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you always know when we're posting new content. Today I'm going to show you how to make a keychain which I thought would be nice to give to your mom or other parent for Mother's Day. And I thought about the keychain because it's pretty universal, even if your parent does not wear any jewelry, they may still attach a keychain to their keys. Okay, so what you're going to need for this are two sizes of pearls and Preciosa pearls as well as our Elite Eureka pearls are going to be perfect for that. You're going to need one size that is eight millimeters and the other size is four millimeters. You're going to need a 10 of the four millimeter pearls and five of the eight millimeter pearls. In addition to that, you're going to need a uh, round beads. Here I have Toho round in the color uh, galvanized aluminum. Uh, and you're going to need three sizes of that. So the three most basic sizes, 15-0, 11-0 and 8-0. Apart from that, you're going to need a keychain, obviously. Uh, you're going to need a head pin. Here I have this two inch, I think, or one and a half inch head pin. A one and a half inch will be absolutely enough. I recommend using 21 gauge or thicker, so 21 or 20, because if it's thinner, it may be kind of a little bit too bendy and flexible for that and one jump ring to attach the um, flying saucer, as I called it, this keychain to the finding. Okay, obviously you're also going to need a needle, and I will be using size 12 needle, and I think this is the best, 12 or 13, because these are really fine and can handle the multiple passes through all of these beads. You're also going to need thread. I will be using 1G in this uh, lovely beige color, but Fireline will also do great. And for those of you who just prefer Fireline, that's perfect. Okay, let's start. Okay, so I'm starting with half a wingspan, around half a wingspan of thread. And I'm not cutting it off yet because I'm just that kind of person that doesn't cut the thread off in the beginning. So the first thing you do is you pick up interchangeably one 8mm pearl and one size 8 toe round. So 10 beads in total. There I have it. And now I'm going to go through all of these beads again from the other side. So like making a circle. Okay. So what you can do here is you can already tie these two threads here so that we have a knot and anything and nothing moves around inside that and everything is nice and tight so I just do a regular double knot in the end I'll tie each thread separately as well but now just making a little knot now taking the thread that I have on my needle and I'm going through that's 8 0. And now what we need to do is pick up one 15 0, seven 11 0s, and another 15 0. And what you do is you just put it through the next 8 0. And do the same for the four remaining sequences. All right, so that is my last sequence. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up these beads here, up until this central bead over here. So the fourth 11-0 from each side, or the fifth bead if we count the 15-0. I'm pulling it tight, but like not too much because it's not gonna matter anyway. And now what I do is I simply uh, add a four millimeter pearl and go with my needle through the next central bead in the next sequence. And another one. So 
So you can already see that we're having a pattern created. And the last one, well, no, that was one before the last one. Now was the last one. Now you can go one more round to make it a little bit more tight, but I'm not going to risk not being able to pass through the next time. So I'm going through this first pearl. And now I'm going to go all the way around that pearl, sort of, adding a sequence of two 15 0s, one 11 -0, and two 15 0s, like that. And I'm going into the very same pearl from the other side. I'm going through that central 11 0 from the previous row and through the next pearl to add another sequence of two 15 0s, one 11 0, and two 15 0s. But this time the 15 0s, I'm not going to add the two last ones, are going to be like together with these ones. So this is going to be common for these two sequences. Let me show you that, what I mean. So I'm only picking up two 15 O's in one 11 O. And I'm going through these two 15 O's in here. Like that. Now through that pearl and that 11 O. And through that next pearl. And again, let me show you one more time. Two 15 O's. One 11 O. And I'm going through the last two 15 O's of the previous uh, sequence. Going through that pearl. Through this 11 O here. And the next pearl. And now for that last one, you may notice that the first two that are shared with this next pearl are already here. So I'm just going through them and only adding one eight, um, one eleven o as I go and back through the previous two 15 O's. Now I'm going to go through that pearl and actually up to reach this kind of circle of 11 O's because I want to strengthen them a little bit. So I'm going to go through the these 11 O's two more times. Right, so this is what it looks right now. And obviously we need to make the other side. So what I do is I go back down through all of these layers. So back through one pearl where I naturally go into this 11 o and down the sequence of 11 o's and one fifteen o. And into the 8 O. And for the other side, I do exactly what I did here. And as you will see, the sequences are going to get a little bit tighter, even because all the beads are going to get more snug together. So you do exactly the same. So, first, the sequence of 1. 15 0, 7, uh, 11 0s, 1 15 0, and into the next 8 0, and do it all around. Then you add a pearl uh, between the central beads in each of these sequences, 
and then you add these little sequences of 215 O's and 111 O on top and securing the central circle. And that will be it. So I'll meet you when I do the second half. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you is that on this side, when you pull them together, they will want to kind of open up on their own because everything gets real snug, as I said, and there's just more tension in here. So I am actually going to go twice through all of them just to help them stay in place as I do all the other sequences and other things that I need to do on this side. But that's why it's good to have a thin needle so that it doesn't have a problem going through. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll come back to you when I finish with all of the rows over here. Right now I just go through all of these 11 rows at the top. And as you can maybe see, well, a, a half a wingspan of thread is just enough. One more row of beads and I could run out of thread. So that was perfect for this purpose. Okay, I will now make knots with both of my uh both of the ends of my thread. So one knot will be in here. And basically the beadwork is done. If you see a uh, pearl popping out, you can just pop it back in. This is what it looks like, and now it's time to put it on our uh, keychain. So I'm taking my head pin, I'm putting Toho 8O on it, I'm just putting another one on top so that it's nice and symmetrical. And now what I do is I bend this right here so that it's ready for the loop, so to speak. And since this is a little bit too long, I trim it a little bit, just enough for this to make a loop. And using my round nose pliers, I loop it around. I'm going to make this a rather large loop, because, I mean, it's a keychain, so it doesn't need to be so petite. Now I'm just going to try to make it a little bit more symmetrical, like that, quite nice. Now the jump ring, let's open it, I'm going to use the round nose pliers for that, there it is. First the flying saucer, and then the keychain. And you're done. This is the flying saucer keychain. And I really like this design. And I think my mom is going to like it as well because she always tells me that she likes to kind of uh, feel for her keys in her purse. And she always wears a keychain uh, that she can easily, you know, feel with her fingers uh, to fish out uh, the keys. So I hope that will be useful for you too. Obviously, you can also attach it to a smaller lobster clasp and make it a charm, or you can attach it to a bail or a larger jump ring and make it into a pendant or an earring. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with this. Send us pictures and post them in comments on our Facebook. Meanwhile, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, all of the materials that I use can be found at EurekaCrystalBeats.com. And for those who watched until this point, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!